Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Pork Rind Podcast. As you can see, we have a empty thing of pork rinds. I ate them last night, accidentally. But with me today is my good friend and fellow YouTuber, Josh. Josh, do you, um, you said you are starting up another YouTube channel, is that correct? Oh yeah, it's uh, called Real American Sports and, uh, well, I've already recorded like three videos and only one of them are actually going to be shown, so. Well, go ahead and subscribe to Real American Sports if you haven't already. Link will hopefully be in the description if I can remember. But let's go ahead and get to this first episode of the podcast started. So tell me, Josh, how are you doing? Man, it's been a... Uh... It was a, it was going good, you know. I've had a good day hanging out with you so far, but unfortunately, I found out I got to work tomorrow, so it kind of puts a little bit of a damper on things. Where do you work? Well, I work. It's called Italian Global Services. I actually go into a plant and clean. Um, I'm not going to reveal the plant's name or where it's located because obvious reasons, but. I mean, it, it's pretty nice, you know, I get treated really well. Uh, Location will be in the description. Uh, there's a cute chick that usually flirts with me. So, oh, okay. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. That's a good reason to work. I mean, it, I work for the money, but I mean. Money and women, that's all you care about. Well, Just you're, money you're, make, and women. you're making me sound like freaking Tony DeNozo in NCIS. I don't watch NCIS. Well. I don't get that reference. Let me think of somebody, James Bond. Well, he, he doesn't care about money. Well, he kind of does. Yeah, James Bond without being the, the nice looking face or womanizer. That's fair, I guess. So how, is, uh, how has coronavirus affected you these past few months? Well, I, mainly... Uh, Mainly, like, for a, a month and a half there, I stayed locked up in my house, you know, because I was worried about, you know, my health and stuff. But um, now I'm I'm not as worried about it for myself as I am for, like, older people or children. So that's why I try to avoid it. Uh, you know, at work I take precautions. I change my gloves after I wipe down anything, you know, so uh, just precautions. Yeah, it's been quite a year. It's been quite a year. They say they're supposed to have the vaccine in a couple months here. They said November, which is, today is September 25th. So about a month and a week, somewhere around there. So, But maybe that'll, you know, help bring things a little bit back to normal. 2021, please. I hope it's normal. Yeah. Hopefully that'll be better and we can actually go to sporting events and hug our loved ones because that's not important, apparently. Oh, and by the way, people, every New Year's, please stop saying it's going to be your year. It's never going to be your year, okay? Sorry, that I had to rant a little bit there, but it, it's not going to be your year. Public service announcement. Unless... Uh, don't say it. Maybe then it could be your year. But if you say it, it's not going to be your year. I did it. <laughs> All right. Um, I wasn't expecting that. But so, Josh, tell me, um, how do you feel about pork rinds? Mm, pork rinds, you know, they're, um, you know, they're, well, they're really good as long as you have a nice bottle of water with you because uh, they Dare, can't Dare get... Park best brand yeah the, absolutely please, please sponsor us designing not really any good but that's uh, what I had oops you can sponsor us too if you want sure it's not pronounced uts I, I don't know how oops. it's pronounced but oops but I'm, I'm just saying like sounds like a German pork rind they're getting free publicity here so yes they are this podcast is brought to you by oops Wiener schnitzel pork rinds. Wiener schnitzel? Yeah. 
I've never heard of Oot. Wiener Schnitzel. Does Oots not sound like a German thing? Like Oots. Oots oh, and yeah. Bakken. It does. This podcast is going off the rails already. I mean, they're, they're Anyway, really... but yes, these are some good pork rinds. You can probably find them at your local grocery store. Uh, not, not if you live in North Carolina, because my family from North Carolina said that they can't find... Pork rinds or that brand of pork rinds? This brand of anything. That brand of anything? There, so... Well, that may... It may be a southern thing. I don't know. I mean, I I don't know. Would you consider North Carolina, like, a southern state? Like, There's some southern people there. They're kind of like... Well, I used to live there, and there's definitely some southerners there. They're kind of... It's kind of like Kentucky. You know, you question... If you can I go guess. somewhere and get sweet tea, then it's probably a southern state. I mean, but also like during the Civil War, West Virginia also fought for the South. So like, but they're I, I don't think they're a southern state at all. So you got some hicks up there though. They sure do. Like that, they talk about freaking country roads. They, t- they talk take about me home cousins and stuff for Alabama. To the place, West Virginia. I belong. And I feel like West Virginia. Copyrights coming. Mountain. Mo- oh yeah, I should probably stop singing that. Yeah, they, they can copyright you. You should have just added some of your own words in there. So like, they, I, I ain't gonna care. This is gonna get like. Road, it's gonna get like five. Views. Ride my horse down the interstate. We he. There we go. Okay. All right, so let's transition into the sporting world. That's kind of our forte. You see Josh is wearing, sporting his brand spanking new Tua Tagovailoa shirt. First time I've wore it, actually. Just came in. Looks pretty good on him, I'd say. You see me sporting the Bama football roll tide. The Dolphins played last night. I, I watched the first half of it because my parents have NFL Network. I don't up here, so it was getting late, so I, I just came up here and did my own thing. Um, but the first half looked pretty good, and apparently the second half looked pretty good, too. I mean, that, um, the big thing is, like, our, we, we need linebackers badly, all right, because we have literally – one linebacker that can, co- that can cover in Jerome Baker, they still can't tackle. I mean, I, tackling was still pretty poor. But it's mostly, like, forcing a lot of incompletions by Gardner and Minshew because, you know, we got in their backfield. Uh, Cam Robinson getting ejected for touching the ref definitely helped. But... Um, you know, overall, I I was really impressed with the offense. Uh, defense still needs some time, and the run blocking in the second half was pretty poor. So, uh, Jesse, all right, look, look, Brian Flores, if for some reason you're watching this, please just bench Jesse Davis. He was the Brian worst. Brian Flores is not watching this. All right, but. So, some uh, any Dolphins coaching staff well, member. For you who don't know, Brian Flores is the head coach of the Dolphins. Please bench Disclaimer. Jesse Davis. He is the worst right tackle I've ever seen in my life. All right, that that might be an exaggeration, but he's he's terrible. And he watched me in high school, so he knows. <laughs> yeah, this guy. Fun fact: All Area Offensive Lineman of the Year. He played right no, tackle. That's not true. I was on the All Area team. Oh well. All area first offense, not all area tackle of the year. Best offensive lineman I've ever seen. Dolphins, if you're smart, you'll bring this guy in for a tryout. Best at five right ten offensive lineman he means. Well, I mean, he, he he's a little undersized. He's like five ten, what, a hundred and eighty pounds. I was like two thirty when I played. Well, okay, well, still quite a bit undersized. Uh, I'm pretty sure the smallest defensive in the league, defensive end in the league, probably dwarfs him. But I mean, we need help at right tackle. All right. So Dolphins, give me a tryout. 
Yeah, I mean, like, I'm serious. Like, if you want, you can bring me in, too, for water boy tryouts. I mean. Gotta start somewhere. <laughs> so, the Alabama Crimson Tide plays tomorrow night, and you're gonna be working, apparently, so that sucks. Yeah. But we're playing Missouri, the Tigers, because who isn't the Tigers? They, they've got 12, play, 12 of their starters opted out, so. Missouri? Yeah, well... 12 players have opted out. I don't I know doubt if they're, they're all starters. Start, well, I mean, either way, if the 12 players were still not opted out, Alabama was probably winning by at least four or five touchdowns. So. I'd have to say, I'm going to guess like 45 to like maybe 14. I said 45 to three. I think our... our they'll, they'll score on our backups. Mate, like... I don't know, because a lot of our backups also had to start last year due to injury, so. Uh, so. But, yeah, who is Missouri's quarterback? I don't even know. Um, who was the quarterback last year? Well, it was Kelly Bryant last year, oh, but yeah. he was a senior, so. Yeah. Uh, it's looking like Sean Robinson, who transferred from TCU. If you I could, remember him. If you couldn't start at TCU, then, I mean. You're probably so not worth it's not going to be good. I don't. I don't know a single player on Missouri's team. So I think the real question is. Well, I, I know one player, Larry Roundtree, the running back. Who's, he's still there. Yeah, he's been there forever. Well, he's like he's Kel- got to be a senior. Though. He's like Kellen Mond. You know, they've been there. They've both been at their respective schools sure. since like 1975. So. Yeah. Taysom Hill. He was at BYU for like six years. Hunter Renfro was at Clemson for 15 years. Oh, I like it. He failed his senior year like 12 times. Uh, I'm, he looks like your accountant. Well, we had, we had Dylan, Dylan Lee at Alabama. It seems like he was there for like eight years. Yeah. So, uh, a lot, it's just like any player that starts their freshman year, it just seems like they're, they're there forever. Wait, what was we even talking about? Oh, Missouri's Missouri. quarterback. Uh, yeah, Missouri is not going to have any offense whatsoever, probably. They've got a, a very experienced defense and supposedly a pretty solid defense, but my prediction, Najee Harris goes for 220 rushing yards and three touchdowns. All right, I think... That's a bold prediction, Josh. I think uh, Najee Harris is a potential Heisman um, contender this year. Fun fact, our our offensive line averages 334 pounds across the board. So we've got a huge offensive line. That's pretty impressive. Let's talk about the games tomorrow. Let's just, uh, I'm going to talk about them or list them off, and I'll give the spread, and let's see what you think about them. Kansas State at Oklahoma. (laughs) Oklahoma is being favored by 28. What do you think? Does Kansas State cover the spread? Oklahoma's probably going to win a seven-point game because they they go down and score in, like, four plays, and then their defense gives up a touchdown in four plays. I don't need a huge deep analysis here. Just tell me, do you think they're going to cover the spread and why? I got Oklahoma by 14 points. So Kansas State will cover the spread. Yes, that. I don't know how all this betting and stuff works, because so, I don't bet on games. No, we're we're not betting. We're just like oh, the spread. What you think? Is this Vegas though, or is this like, ESPN? Oklahoma. This is just ESPN. I but I think Vegas actually does the spread stuff. Yeah. They, See, like Oklahoma's favored by twenty eight, but if you pick Kansas State, that means they're either gonna win or they're gonna lose by less than what the spread is. I'm not picking. So even if so, if, so you're picking Kansas State. I, I guess. But you're not, but you're not picking them outright because if you pick them outright, that means you think they'll win. Oklahoma you're just, fans, you're just picking them to cover the spread. Oklahoma fans, do not get in the comments and say your defense is worth the flip. You shut out a high school football team in your first game. That's not impressive. Okay. Florida at Ole Miss. Florida is favored by 14. What do you think? Well. I think my original prediction for the score was Florida to win thirty-one to fourteen. So, uh, so you think they'll co- so you think Florida will cover the spread? Yeah, and uh, 
also, apparently Ole Miss is not starting John Reese Plumley for some reason. I'm pretty sure it's John Rice Plumley. Well, whatever is not, he, he's all right. He probably eats oots. He, he can't throw, but he can run. He would. He probably run all over most of the SEC defenses. But Matt Matt Corral or Coral is going to get the start. Uh, Lane Kiffin's the coach, so so they're they're not going to be worth the flip. Okay, I'd say I'd say Florida will probably cover the spread. Ole Miss is not good. Kentucky at Auburn. Auburn is favored by seven and a half. My original score prediction was Auburn to win 28-21. Uh, so Kentucky will cover the spread. You're saying? Yeah, Kentucky's a just barely. Kentucky's a fairly underrated team. In my, they're, they're I know least, you. I know you're pretty high in Kentucky this year. They're like this. I've got them as the they're seventh. Ranked, they're ranked twenty third. I've got them as the seventh best team in the SEC, uh, above Ole Miss and Tennessee. To a lot of well, Tennessee seventh best fans. isn't amazing. Yeah, but I mean top there's half. There's fourteen teams. But I mean, there's you've got your obvious top six. A and M obviously is a top six team. Uh, they're going to beat all the teams they're supposed to beat and lose to all the teams they're not supposed to beat. So A and M is predictable. Okay, I'll say I'll say Auburn wins by ten. I'll say they cover the spread. I mean, but I mean, there's a lot of Auburn fans that think they're going to just come out and blow out Kentucky. Okay, we'll just zoom through these. UCF at East Carolina, UCF's favored by 27. You think they'll cover it? I, I don't honestly don't know. Uh, East Carolina, have they even played yet? No. Nope. I don't even know. Like, we'll say UCF covers the spread. They're ranked number 13. Georgia Southern at Louisiana. Louisiana is ranked number 19 in the country. No, they and they're favored by 11 and a half at home against Georgia Southern. They're going to... They're they're gonna cover the spread because Georgia Southern has like thirty three players out. <laughs> so Louisiana will cover the spread. You heard it here first. Number twenty four Louisville at number twenty one Pitt. Pitt is favored by three points. I've got Louisville winning the game. I think Louisville will win too. Notre well that one's canceled. Notre Dame and Wake Forest is postponed. Oh, thank God. Mississippi State at number six LSU. LSU is favored by sixteen and a half. I think it's going to be. I've got LSU winning forty-one to thirteen. Uh, so you think they will very much cover the spread? Yeah, Mississippi State's. Not I think it'll be closer than that. Well, you got Mike Leach there. You got KJ Costello, who's pretty good. Yeah, but who's only going to be better with Mike Leach? Do they really? Do they really have the players that fit the air raid? And also. Mike Leach defenses are never. I'm ever not saying good. they're going to win. I just think it'll be closer than you think. It it could originally I said it would be, but the more I thought about it, I say Mississippi State will cover the spread. They will lose by 14. I, mean, I think. I just think LSU if they if they just keep ground and pounding Mississippi State because I mean Mike Leach defenses cannot stop the run. They can't stop anything. I mean seriously, but. If you just ground and pound and throw a ton of short passes, I think you keep the air raid offense off the field anyway. So, so you think LSU will go over the spread of 16 and a half? Easy. All right. Number eight, Texas. That's a little high. At unranked Texas Tech, Texas is favored by 17 and a half. Texas is covering that. Texas Tech almost. Number one, they gave up 567 yards and four touchdowns to an FCS quarterback. And the, the only reason they won is because they stopped a two-point conversion. So, Texas covers. Mm. T- Texas wins by three touchdowns. Who was Texas Tech's head coach? I, I'm not even sure. I can't even remember. Have they had the same one since Kingsbury left? Who was it after Kingsbury? I feel like they promoted like an offensive coordinator or quarterback coach. I have no idea. I think Texas Tech will cover and they'll lose by 10. Because mm. I think it will be close because, I mean, it's Texas. I mean, well, Texas defense Texas. is a lot better than a lot of the We shall see. Teams. Number 22, Army, at number 14, Cincinnati. Cincinnati is favored by 13. That is – all right. That's a pretty good game. That's two teams – that are legitimate teams that are not Power Five teams. Uh, 
all I'm saying, they're they're two probably two of the better non power five teams in the nation. I think Cincinnati wins by a field goal. Mm. So Army covers. I'm I think Army wins by a field goal. So yes, Army covers. I'm and wins outright. That option. That option's hard to stop now. God. Unranked West Virginia at number fifteen Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State is favored by six and a half. I'm picking an upset here. West Virginia wins by ten. I can see that. Oklahoma, wins by ten. Wow. All right, Oklahoma State is supposed to be a school that can drop forty points on anybody. You put up a whopping sixteen points on Tulane, so. That's my reasoning. West Virginia by 10. Uh, West Virginia's look like... West Virginia played a team that's probably about the level that Oklahoma State played. And West Virginia completely blew their opponent out of the water. So, West Virginia, West Virginia by 10. Well, I can see that. I don't see... I can see that happening, but I don't think West Virginia will beat them. I say they cover the spread and they'll lose by three to Okie State. Oh, here's a hard one. Number four, Georgia at Arkansas. Georgia is favored by 28 points. What do you think? Will they cover it? I'm going to get a lot of hate and a lot of people calling me an idiot. That's fine. I picked Georgia to win the game 24 to 21. Wow. I believe Georgia is You're an going... Idiot. I idiot. believe Georgia is going to be looking ahead to Auburn the next week. They play Auburn a week too. Yes. Wow. So I think, that's and that's a road game. So I, I see Georgia overlooking Arkansas because I mean it's Arkansas, and I see, especially considering how Georgia struggled with a four-win South Carolina team on a third-string quarterback. Okay, well, that was last, last year. year. So, and also you add in the fact if we're bringing up last year, Arkansas lost, got beat down by Western Kentucky. Yeah, but. Georgia also does not have a quarterback. Arkansas. They got JT Daniels. Is he eligible? He's not eligible, and his legs hurt, so even if he was eligible, he wouldn't even be playing. Uh, So. Okay, well, I think Arkansas will cover the spread because 28 is a lot. I say they lose by 21. I don't think it'll be as close as you're saying because they're terrible, but. I mean, they do have uh, Franks, though. He's not bad. Yeah, he's going to be playing with a chip on his shoulder. They have Franks. But I think 21 is respectable, considering Georgia's number four in the country. Yeah. I, um, we already talked about Alabama and Missouri. Alabama's favored by 27 and a half. Do you, do you think I, we cover that? I've got Alabama winning 45 to three. So. I, I think we cover that. I think we win by about 28. Yeah, like, like I said, Najee, 220 yards, three touchdowns on the ground. Vanderbilt at number 10, A&M. A&M is favored by 31. Well, I had A&M winning 38-7, to 7, so that's exactly so 31. that's exactly right. So, A&M will cover. I think, I think Vanderbilt will keep it a little bit closer. I say A&M wins 31-10. to 10. Although, I could see... 29th year senior Kellen Mond once again feeling to live up to the hype and A and M struggling with Ar- Vanderbilt, but uh, 30. I'm currently doing a Vanderbilt dynasty on NCAA 14. It's going pretty well. What year are you in? Number one. I'm like eight and three or something. Well, what what game are you playing? Because I know it wasn't 14, was it? 14. Oh really? Wait, who are are you using like the updated rosters? I am. Yeah. So uh, they have the. I'm not using the who, quarterback they're starting though. I'm using wait, this little fast guy. Who is the starting quarterback for Vanderbilt? Some some dude named like Masu or something like Masao or I can't remember his first name. Riley Neal was a. I senior. think he's number two. Like, Riley Neal was a senior. Deuce Wallace was a senior. And then Mo Hassan transferred to USC. So they literally don't have a quarterback that's ever taken a I'm, snap. I'm using this freshman named Mike Wright. He's got like 82 speed. So so uh, a potential sleeper. Not a, not a great arm, though. Eventually. Watch out for Mike Wright, Vanderbilt. You heard it here first. 0-1 Florida State at number 12 Miami. 
Miami is favored by 11. Personally, I think Miami is just a tad overrated. Louisville's defense is hot. Although, De'Ara King is pretty good. So, uh, I've got Miami winning by 17. So, Miami covers the spread. I think Miami will cover. I think they'll win by 14. Florida State, they just, they just ain't no good. They're garbage. Number 16, Tennessee. At South Carolina, Tennessee is favored by a mere three and a half points. Oh man! I know you got a lot to say about I've this. I've been one. I've been ticking Tennessee fans. Tennessee fans have been laughing. They they think it's absolutely impossible that South Carolina is going to beat them. All right, I've got South Carolina winning twenty to ten. All right, the reason being Tennessee has only beat, beaten a Will Muschamp coach team in the SEC a mere one time. Muschamp's like one in, like six and one against Tennessee, so. And it's on the road, it's week one. South Carolina is gonna get you guys. That's a good reason. I think, mm, I think Tennessee will win by about three points. So I think Carolina will cover the spread just barely, but I don't I don't really see them winning just yet. So it was you said three. I don't know how good their that starting quarterback they have is. I don't understand. Colin Hill or whatever. I don't understand why Helensky's not starting because I feel like I he guess played. His is better. I feel like he played really well last year though. Like he's got a good. He had, arm. he had moments, but he was inconsistent. Yeah, he he good carved out. us up at, at times towards the end well, of the who game. Who doesn't? I mean. Well, it's I, like them freshman quarterback. They come in against Alabama. They'll be just like Drew Brees out there. Freaking Man- Manziel. Trevor Knight. Trevor Knight. That's uh, all you gotta know. Let's see, Bo Nix. Uh, he was not the reason Auburn. Won. NC State at number twenty, Virginia Tech. Tech is favored by seven. I thought that game was canceled. Mm-hmm. It says it's tomorrow at seven. So, uh, well, Virginia Tech's favored by seven. Yep. Um, they haven't played a game yet. I'm going to say NC State gets them by a field goal. So I will say Tech wins by 10. And they will cover the spread. Last game here. This is just the ranked ones. I'll try to look at the SEC ones. Troy at number 18, BYU. BYU is favored by 14. I've got Troy winning the game by a touchdown. Troy, Troy is known for uh, beating teams they're not supposed to beat. So, I've got Troy by a touchdown. Hey, LSU, don't you forget. You guys can say that Alabama lost to the UL Monroe. The last time we played UL Monroe, we shut them out. So, I don't know why you guys keep bringing that up. All right, we made up for our loss. It's time for you guys to make up for yours. All right, because our little our our little brother Troy owned you guys. All right, um, do you pick Troy to beat him? Mm-hmm. I can see that happening. Uh, sure, why not? I'll say Troy wins by seven. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm trying to look up the other SEC games. This is just doing top 25. How long have we been going? 28 minutes. Golly. Do another five or six. Okay. Um. I think we, I think that's all the SEC ones. See that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, three. Oh, yeah, that's everybody. Yeah, it's, there's six SEC games. Well, seven. I thought there was more than that. So every SEC game features at least one ranked team this week. All right. Well, that is all of them. Now, in my last video, I did ask for you guys to ask any questions if you had any. And I'm looking, and there are zero comments. So we're not going to do a Q&A. Over under on how long it takes before Ryan Fitzpatrick crashes and burns and Tua takes over. What's the over under? No, I, I, I'm asking what how how long because um. You gotta give an over under, and I pick over or under. Oh well. 
Let's see, we play Seattle this upcoming week, and we play San Francisco. Denver. We're gonna get crushed by Seattle. They're awesome. Yeah, San Francisco. Even with all the injuries, they're probably gonna beat us. Denver, we might have a chance just because Jeff Driscoll's starting. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say by week nine when we play the uh, week eight when we play the Cardinals. Two is starting against the Cardinals over under. I'd be all for it. I really want to see him play. Tua versus Kyler Murray in the first matchup, a rematch of the uh, of the 2018 college football playoff game. I was at that game. Although in Miami, actually, I was in the Dolphin Stadium. Well, I, I think this one will be in Arizona, but. I'm pretty sure Arizona's going to crush us. There's no stopping DeAndre Hopkins. Dolphins have a really nice stadium, though. If you ever go in it, it's really nice. I've never been to it. They got all these escalators and stuff. I like it better. I like it a lot better than the Falcons one. I don't know. I feel like if, if you had went there back in, like, 2014, before we did the stadium renovations, and it was, like, it wasn't even covered up, and you had, like, orange seats I feel like it would have been a lot worse orange seats are way worse than the, oh. the light blue ones the light blue ones are pretty nice not to mention like the fact you could see like all the orange where they, there was like 20,000 fans at the game and most of them were Raiders fans when we were playing the Raiders yep yeah. alright well I think I'm going to try to wrap this first episode up This has been the inaugural episode of the Pork Skin, or no, Pork Ryan podcast, I mean. Pork Ryan podcast. Oops. This is sponsored by Utz Pork Rinds. Make sure to go to your local grocery store, pick them up. They're delicious. You can get original barbecue. Louisiana hot sauce is one of my favorites. Barbecue, did I say salt and vinegar? Salt and vinegar, I mean, all kinds of stuff. But I try to stick with the original sometimes. Uh, you know, zero carbs. If you're on keto diet, you know, that's great because it has no carbs at all. Pump that iron and all yeah. that good stuff. Uh, thank you guys for checking this out if you're watching. If you made it to the end, you are a brave soul. But this has been me... And Josh, make sure to go check out his new channel, Real American Sports. Link will be in the description. And I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe yes, to that Pigskin. Too. That too. And co- and leave a comment below on okay. like stuff. Thank you, Josh. Goodbye.